Hello everyone. Today I'm so fortunate to be speaking with an endurance athlete, personal trainer, and my very good friend, Rob Hunt. Rob, now, how did you turn that adversity into such an amazing opportunity to help other people, inspire other people, change other people's lives? How did you do that? Um, I think when you're faced with some sort of tragedy in life, whatever it might be, and, and a lot of people do go through things in life, there's no way we all get out of this thing scot-free. There's always going to be some things coming at us. You get a, a very clear choice, a time where you get to decide how you uh, approach it. And it was, it's quite vivid for me. I remember actually it was like I can go left, which would be despair and bitterness and you know, possibly abusing my body, or we can go right, which is a little bit more of a tougher uphill battle, but it's all, the light at the end of that tunnel is far brighter. And um, I just chose to make a difference. And uh, yeah, I, I was in, introduced um, to the isogenics community through yourself and Paul and my mum, and uh, I remember being invited to a UIA, University in Action, with David Wood. And that was only, well, I think it was four months after mm -hmm. Rochelle had passed away, and four months felt like four minutes, so it was still quite raw. And I met some phenomenal people, you know, just some of the greatest people I've ever met in my life. And I've always decided, I made a choice at the start that I would never shy away from my story with Rochelle. I was very proud of who she was and what she'd given me and, and the lessons I learned from her inside of Ice Jinx and, and outside. And I always wanted to share her story, so I did that at that UIA. And, and I know that I impacted a few people and, and there was a few people there quite shocked and it was a tough time. I remember leaving the room quite often to have a cry and get through that moment. And on the last day, David approached me and asked me if I'd be you know, willing to get up and share my story because there was two people having a birthday and then there was myself and another girl who had actually lost her father. So we were going through that grieving process and he wanted us to share our stories so the whole room could then see the circle of life, which is so evident when you go through something like I've been through. And I probably went as white as these flowers. I didn't feel too good about it. Mm. But I decided very quickly that if I could get up and tell my story, if I could make a difference for one person, it'd be worthwhile putting myself through that you know, difficult situation. So I did. And it was probably 12 minutes of the best speech I think I've ever given. I, it wasn't recorded, I remember, but I wish it was because I remember it would actually come out really well. It's the, the most flowing um, speech I'd ever given. And my point has always been not to dwell on the, the tragedy of what I've gone through and what the whole uh, community associated with Rochelle's story has been through. It's more about the light and the beauty and the wonderful you know, things that she gave us and how amazing life is. So that was my point during that meeting. And I remember how much I impacted people. And I thought to myself, wow, if I can go forwards and do this more, it would make my life a lot richer and better for it and it would make her loss that little bit easier to bear. And So I made my choice to that meeting, it was really cool. And I remember that very well. I remember that, that whole David Wood time and coming out once you were sitting on the sofa, you didn't think you'd go back in the room, I sat with you and uh, it was a roar. And that was what so, was so amazingly brave about Rob because when he was asked to do it, you did turn that colour, but you did. and that speech it impacted every single person that was in that room and i will never forget that moment mm. and you did you made that decision either to curl up and become less or you could feel that rochelle had given you so much or you had so much beauty in that love for each other that you couldn't deny that yeah. and that's what i love that you've you've done this for rochelle i feel like this is a man with an angel sitting on his shoulder constantly, and we all feel that. And the beautiful thing is that Rob is now in a great relationship with a gorgeous, she's English too, makes her extra gorgeous, <laughs> uh, Alexa, who is just so beautiful, so supportive. I know that she's been running some of these laps with you, running up and down the stairs with you. And it's so incredible to see that because what was wonderful also was watching how your mum looked after you because actually Rob didn't like the isogenics products at the beginning. I met you once and he scared me a little bit, <laughs> to be honest, you did. And we met her and, um, because he was this elite athlete and really didn't want to know about isogenics. And we had a, a really nice dinner, but it was like, oh, he really doesn't want to know. And then all this happened and we became friends and I know your mum was pouring products into you, particularly Ionics, 
and then you started, what started happening with you? Because you were competing, weren't you? Yeah, I was, yeah. I was, I was actually not doing too well prior to, um, to starting Isogenics and prior to Rochelle passing away. I was actually had some aches and pains that weren't oh. shifting and was really impacting my training. And once I started, I just noticed that things got a lot better. My body felt more in balance. My energy level's a lot higher. My recovery time's a lot shorter. And I just started doing a lot better in my training sessions, which then crossed over into my competing. So it was a really important thing for me from a sporting point of view. But just from a, a welfare point of view, just a feel good, mm. as much as I could at a time in my life that was really important, that was very valuable. I couldn't put a, a number on that. And it would allow me to get back and train hard when I was actually prior to Rochelle passing away not able to. And, um, and then because my body seemed a lot more supported with the thanks to Isogenics, I actually went back out and trained. And I expected, to be fair, for the old problems to come back. I expected there to be the aches and pains that had once plagued me, I've, but they never did. You know, wow. whatever that coincidence is or what, I'm not too sure, but I was so grateful that my body felt supported and my health felt strong. So. And didn't you do some PBs as well during that time? Yeah. How crazy is that? Yeah, yeah, I PB'd. Every time I did the cleanse day, I PB. You know, and that's uh, <laughs> now, <laughs> it's now really has, uh, I've done a lot of research into cleansing since then. And today as we speak, I'm doing a cleanse, first day of a double. With my challenge coming up on the weekend, I'm aware that the benefits of cleansing will really set me up for success for Saturday. So yeah, I just really enjoyed those PBs. Wow, that's, that's extraordinary. I just love your story. And you never, ever gave up. That's once you turned that corner and decided if you were going left or right, and you, you decided your decision was made, you never, ever gave up. And I've watched you that with your isogenics business too. You've now got a really big team. You're an awesome leader. And everybody respects you. Every time you stand on that stage, and you explain about the products and isogenics and the business, um, you just see everybody's jaws drop open because you have also studied an enormous amount. You went into the science because that's his background. So he really wanted to find out everything about these products. Um, yeah, you're just the most awesome person and I'm so honoured to, and I know Paul and I are really honoured to have you as, as our friend. And, um, being a white rib ribbon ambassador, you know, stairway to heaven on Saturday. Ah, there's so much happening with you, but I just like a few fun facts now about you. <laughs> Here we go. I know something about Caribbean. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Can you share? Yeah, so I, I was, um, well, I, I worked in the Caribbean for a couple of years, which was fantastic. I had a lot of fun out there working on cruise ships. Uh, firstly, in the casino, worked as a casino technician, uh, fixing slot machines, making sure no one ever got paid any money. Um, no, that doesn't happen, but anyhow, it felt like that. But then I turned it, went into personal training because that was my passion and I really enjoyed helping people. So I was personal training out in the Caribbean for, for a little while as well. So it was a lot of fun traveling around all the islands, getting to exercise in the most phenomenal places, running up and down these incredible mountains and swimming in the cleanest water. It was, yeah, Just a real great time in my life. Oh, beautiful. And tell me, do you, when you're running up and down the stairs, you have to do something. Are you listening to audio books? Are you listening to music? What are you doing? Yeah, I get that question a lot actually. And, um, you know, I haven't listened to a single song. I've, I've done, I think it's about 120 hours of training there now and not one song have I listened to because I see it a really good opportunity to learn. I think if I'm going to spend four hours plus on doing something, it's a lot of my time, a lot of the day gone. So I need to make sure I'm utilising that time. So I listen to some of the podcasts we get through Isogenics based on nutrition, some on the, the, the business growing part of it. But I'm also listening to um, Anthony Robbins, got a great thing from him at the moment, and I love The Go-Giver and The Go-Giver Sells More. Really enjoying those audio books at the moment. Oh, The Go-Giver is one of my very, very favorite books. Yeah. Absolutely love that book. If you haven't read it, make sure you get a copy because it's such a special book. And Rob, I always ask everybody this question. So, if you could just choose one thing that about yourself that you want people to know, what would it be? That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> Tricky one. Uh, I guess that I care. You know, that I actually 
my main driver is that I care about the results and care about the person and you know how they feel and what's going on in their life and you know in the way that we can be quite busy sometimes there's a lot of things going on you don't always get to get back on your text messages or your Facebook messages and people connecting with you sometimes it takes you a day or two but it doesn't mean I don't care it like I do, you know, I think that's the most important thing. I do care about my friendships, I care about my family, I care about the people I've connected with Isogenics, I care about the people I've helped get started with Isogenics, and I wanna make sure that I leave a great legacy. You know, when I, when I finish up my time on this planet, I wanna make sure I can look back and be really proud of what I've done. I know when Rochelle lost her life, I think there would be about 15 people, 15 of her friends come to me to say, she was my best friend. She did this for me, she did that for me. And I just was really impressed by the impact she'd had on so many lives. And she did it from love, not from anywhere else. And that was something I really took away. That, that ability to actually help people and, and care about them and do those little things uh, is really important. Well, I know that you do that. You certainly do. We know that you care. You've made a huge, huge impact and you inspire so many people. And I've just got one last question. What's next for Rob Hunt? <laughs> <laughs> What's next? Well, I mean, I'll be in Vegas in a couple of weeks, which I'm excited by, and I'm going to be doing a trek through the Grand Canyon, taking some time up to go see Sedona, taking a lecture up to Sedona. So that's going to be really exciting, that period. And then we're going to be in Vegas for celebration, which is going to be awesome. But then I just watched, before I come over here, I was watching online a guy who's doing a charity event through the South Pole, uh, a very long event, race, quite challenging. And it sort of tweaked a few things in me that made me think, well, after the stairs, that's been a big challenge and that's created a lot of awareness and interest, but I don't just want that to be the last time because violence against women will continue. And people need to be out there making a difference. And I know my cause will be a lifetime commitment. And I had that conversation with Rochelle's mum only the other day that I'll never forget her daughter and I'll never let that legacy go. So I'll just keep looking for more challenges to make sure I can use that to test myself and to raise awareness for that. Yeah. Well, as a woman, as a mother, about to be a grandmother, and as somebody who's been involved in a very brutal home invasion, I thank you, Rob, from the bottom of my heart and for all the women, from every woman, for what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you.